OK, take a look at this scenario here. Um, we are going to fire a, uh, a cannonball. So th uh, this, this is a cannon here. And we're, we're going to fire a cannonball. And um, because we're on Earth, the, um, the gravity on Earth is, uh, well, it's 9.8. But let's, let's round it off to 10 meters per second squared. So no matter where the cannonball is, suppose the cannonball is over here, there's always going to be gravity acting on it. So the gravity is pulling it down. Um, now, re remember, when, when we say um, the, the acceleration is, is uh, 10 meters per second squared, it, it, uh, it means that um, every second the speed decreases by by 10. Well, when I say when I the, the reason why it's decreasing is because we are taking the, the up as a positive. Now, um, anything that's downwards we we're going to take as a, as negative. So so in the past when 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 we looked at dropping a cannonball off the building. We, uh, we, we just looked at downward. So, so we, we consider downward as positive, meaning that we don't really care about the direction. We only care about it, the length going downhill. But now, now we, we want to take direction into account because, because this, this scenario here, um, direction is important. Whereas this scenario over here, dropping a cannonball off a building, direction is not important. So, uh, so we, we didn't care about the positive or negative. Now, hang on, let, let me clear this up. Now, okay, we're, we're going to fire a cannonball. When t equals zero is at ground level. Now, um, let, let, let's say we're going to fire this cannonball up at, um, 50, uh, 50 meters per second. Okay. Um, now gravity is always pulling it downwards, uh, 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so, so what, what this mean, uh, what this means is that every second the speed decreases by 10. Now this is our initial, uh, an initial speed, uh, 50 meters per second, okay, upwards. So now, now what, what, what that means is when time equals zero, remember at t equals zero, uh, at t equals zero, the, uh, the speed is, um, is, uh, is 50. So we are just saying, we are just saying this, we're going to fire this cannonball out at 50 meters per second. Okay. Um, now when, because the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, it means that every second the, the speed decreases by, by, by 10. That, that's, that's how this, well, well, the speed here would be, uh, the speed here would be 40. Okay. Um, the speed here, well, another second later, the speed will be 30. Um, and this here, the speed will be, well, notice it's getting slower and slower. Um, the, the speed here will be, will be 20. And the speed here will be, will be 10. Um, the speed here, that's, that's when it comes to a stop. So the speed here is zero. Okay. So, so you fire it up. It goes really fast, but then gradually, the uh the speed decreases and then it, it reaches the point where where it's stationary and then it starts to fall back down again now now this this point here the speed is is zero um when when it starts falling down again remember acceleration is 10 uh 10 meters per second squared downwards so so the speed is zero here um so the speed here would be uh would be 10 so, so this is, this is five seconds. Six seconds, uh, would be, well, th this is also at t equals six. Okay. t equals six here. And then seven seconds, uh, the, the cannonball will, will be here. Uh, so, so the speed here will be, will be 20 going down again. And, um, and then because the acceleration is 10, the, the speed will increase by, uh, by, by 10 again. So, so, after reaching its maximum point, maximum height, it starts to free fall down. Now, free falling down is, is what we what we did before. H equals uh, g t squared over two. Um, it's similar to that. So, so, so my point is, if if you want to uh, draw this uh, the speed time graph for this cannonball, uh, when time equals zero, the um, remember we are saying the uh, the speed is fifty. So when time equals zero, the speed is 50. One second later, well, because acceleration is 
10 meters per second squared downwards, then the, the speed would decrease by, by 10. So, so at this point here, the speed would be, would be 40. At this point here, the speed would be 30. At this point here, the speed would be tw uh, 20. Uh, at this point here, the, uh, the speed would be uh, 10. Uh, and then at this point here is where, where the cannonball comes to a stop, uh, zero. So uh, here. Now, um, then, then it starts to go, start to free fall uh, after, after reaching its maximum height. It starts to free fall. So here the speed will be zero, which is uh, five at zero here. Five seconds, the, the speed is zero. And then a second later, it will be 10. Now it's starting to accelerate downwards. So um, it will be 10. Uh, and then this uh, here will be 20, and then uh, and then this here will be 30, um, then, then 40, then 50. Basically, your your speed time graph will look like this. Okay. Ah, oh, well, ugly. Hang on. Your speed time graph will look something like this. Um, hang on. And then uh, and then this. Okay. Um, but the thing is, you see, let's um. Speed is not a very good, it's not a very useful graph because, um, well, a better graph would be to use velocity. So in, um, in, uh, in one of the early videos, I, I explained the difference between speed and velocity. Um, just, just remember that uh, velocity is like speed, but you, you've got to take direction into account. So now let's, let's look, let's take this same scenario here. But rather than using speed time graph, let's use velocity time graph. Velocity is so much better than, than your, your speed, your, your speed time graph. And you, you understand why as time goes on. But let's, let's try and do velocity here. When t equals zero, the velocity is, uh, 50. When t equals one, velocity is 40. When t, well, well, re remember the, the, uh, the, the velocity is, is decreasing by 10 each time. Okay, well there, so, so there it will, it will look like this. So here, the, uh, the cannonball has reached its maximum height. Now, the, the, the speed here is, uh, is 10, but the velocity here is, is negative 10. Okay, it's negative 10, but it's still measured in meters per second. The, the only difference is that this is, t well, w when you look at speed, you don't know which direction we're talking about. 10, 10 meters per second, but in, in what direction? You see, when you have this minus, it's, it's really useful. So, so for the time being, let's, let's just plot minus 10 here. Uh, and then, and then, um, and then seven, uh, seven seconds, it will be, uh, 20. Uh, eight seconds will be 30. Uh, nine seconds will be, um, would be 40. And this is where it hits the ground. It will hit the ground at, at um, negative, uh, 50 meters per second. So your, your velocity time graph will look like this. Okay. Your, your velocity time graph. Now, the reason why velocity is so much better than speed is suppose you want to know the height at, let's say, t equals, um, t equals, I don't know, uh, well, re remember on the way down. Okay. So, so, uh, on the way down is how, suppose you want to know the, the, uh, the, the, the height here when on the way down. So it takes five seconds to get to here. Six, seven, eight. Let, let's say 8.3 seconds. So what is the height after 8.3? That's somewhere around here. You see that if you look at the speed, it's, it's not that useful. If you look at the velocity time graph, let's say 8.3 is here. Okay. What you do is you, you work out the area of, um, of this, of this, um, or the area underneath the curve here, and then you, you, you basically just add the two. Well, this here will be a negative area. Uh, this here will be a positive. So when you come to add the two, it, re it represents the uh, the actual height of um, of this thing here. Um, don't 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 use the uh, speed time graph anymore. Um, it's not it's not as useful. You you will see why velocity is so much better. So um, in, in the next video, I, I will give you some examples. Okay.